crime does not pay. secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now, the Avenger and death rings the bell. I'll drop you and Fern off at your office, Jim. Okay, Inspector. Thanks for taking us to lunch, Inspector. Hey, you're welcome, Fern. Oh, say, Inspector, I have those chemical reports ready on the Hadley case. You can pick them up if you want to. Uh, good, I'll do that. Oh, look, there must be a big fire somewhere. Uh, sure looks that way. Say, the whole fire department's out. This is something big. What do you say we tag along, Inspector? I think we better, Jim. That big tenement house at the end of the block. Well, they'll never be able to save that. It's going up like tender. Better park here, Inspector. Yeah. Come on. Gosh, I hope no one was in that house. Well, it's an inferno, all right. That building's ready to collapse. Well, they're turning the hose on the next house. Might as well. That first one is a goner. Now that the firemen have pulled out and I've sent Fern back to the office, how about giving me the lowdown on why you're hanging around here, Inspector? Well, Jim, this tenement house belonged to a man by the name of Roy Wade. And it just happens that this is the fourth house owned by Wade to burn down within the past few months. Well, that's certainly a good enough reason for a thorough investigation. What's your theory? Arson? Insurance? Or what? I don't know yet. But in two of those other fires, a light was lost. The same thing happened here today. Now, don't tell me you'd be willing to call it murder, Inspector. Well, even if we couldn't find a thing to substantiate such a theory in those other cases, if anyone died in this fire, I'm not going to be satisfied there was an accident. <laughs> How the worm has turned. Hey, maybe I should make you convince me of that. Come on, Jim. Let's give this place a good going over. <laughs> Uh, Jim, uh, here's a complete medical report on the remains of that body we found in the fire. Who was it, Inspector? An old recluse by the name of Adam Tanner. He'd lived in that house of Roy Wade's for almost 20 years, but the important thing is that Tanner was dead hours before that fire broke out. Oh, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, the doctor says he was killed by a blow on the head at least four hours before the fire started. Well, I suppose you've called in Wade for questioning. Yeah, I got him waiting outside. I wanted you to be here when I put him on the grill. Fine, bring him in. All right. Okay, Wade, in here. Hey, listen here, Inspector. What's the idea of having me pick up like a common criminal? If you had some questions to ask me, why didn't you just... Sit down, Wade. Mr. 
Brandon and I will ask the questions. This happens to be a murder investigation. Murder? Who's murder? Adam Tanner's your tenant. He didn't die in that fire. He was killed beforehand. Well, that's too bad. I didn't have any use for Tanner. He didn't but... like you either. Now, during the past year, he wrote several letters of complaint to the Board of Health about the rundown condition of that house of yours he lived in. Tanner was a crank and a troublemaker. Always behind in his rent, too. And it wasn't because he didn't have the money. He had plenty. Do you have any idea who might have killed Tanner? Uh, no, no. I only saw him once a month. Oh, when did you see him last? Oh, about a week ago. Was that when you threatened to have him put out? Uh, well, yes, yes. We uh, had an argument. What, what are you two getting at? Do you think I killed Tanner? Uh, we're not ready to bring any charges yet, Wade. But there's no doubt about it. Tanner's murder puts you in a bad spot. That's only your opinion, Inspector. I'm in no spot. All right, take a look at the facts, Wade. Within five months, four heavily insured houses belonging to you have burned down. Now, three lives were lost in those fires, and we can prove that at least one of those persons was murdered. Well, you can stack up those facts any way you want to, Inspector. I am getting a lawyer, and I won't answer any more questions unless he tells me to. And the next time you bring me down here, you'd better have a warrant for me, or you'll be in trouble. These samples of burnt wood look alike to me. I don't think you'll find any clues here. I've already found some, Fern. You have? Yes. We believe Tanner was murdered in the kitchen of that house and that the fire originated there. Now, this is a piece of burnt wood taken from what was left of the kitchen wall. Here, take a look at it through the spectroscope. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. It's just another piece of charcoal as far as I can see. Well, no, it isn't, Fern. That piece of wood didn't burn normally. If it had, the cross-checks on it would have a definite size. Those are finer and closer together than they should be. That proves that some outside agent was used to help the fire along. Gosh, arson isn't what it used to be, is it? No, science is fighting the fire bug every step of the way these days. Do you think these fires were the work of a pyromaniac or planned with a motive, Jim? The murder of Tanner rules out the pyromaniac. But murder wasn't the motive for those other fires. Insurance, maybe? Well, 90% of all arson cases are attempts to collect insurance, so we can't disregard that. Then the case is solved. Roy Wade was the only person who stood to gain anything by all those fires. Well, what, may I ask, did he have to gain by murdering Tanner? Why, that's a simple deduction, Jim. This is what happened. Tanner was out. Wade used his passkey to get into the house. He was out in the kitchen preparing everything for the fire when Tanner came in and surprised him. They had a fight and Wade killed Tanner. <laughs> well, not so fast, Inspector Collier. It's been proved that Tanner was killed four hours before the fire broke out. Well, Wade was terrified. After he killed Tanner, he fled. When his terror wore off, he realized that he could destroy all evidence of the murder merely by setting fire to the house. He went back and did just that. Okay? No. Flimsy. Flimsy? Why? Because so far, we haven't been able to place Wade at the scene of the crime. Oh, I'll take it, friend. Hello? Inspector White, Jim. I just wanted to tell you, I've closed the Wade case. You've closed it? Yes, sir. Sewed it up tight. Well, how? I found two witnesses who saw Wade leaving Tanner's place a few minutes before the fire broke out. How do you like that? Well, I'll admit that looks bad, but... I've sent my men out to pick up Wade on suspicion of murder. Let's see him trying to talk himself out of that. Inspector, not so fast. I certainly scooped you on this one, Jim. So long. Inspector! He hung up. Oh, what was it, Jim? The inspector's arresting Wade on suspicion of murder. You see, it's just like I said. I knew Wade was guilty. Well, you may be right, but so far all the evidence is circumstantial. And the inspector won't be able to hold Wade long on the strength of it. Well, after all, Jim, there aren't any other suspects. You mean we haven't uncovered any other suspects. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't any. Come on, Fern. Let's set up that microtome. I'm going back to work. Why are we making a check on all the houses we owns? I'm just not satisfied with the set pattern of this case, Fern. A man in Wade's position would have to be awfully stupid to believe he could get away with four fires and a murder. 
And Wade is far from stupid. Well, here's the last address on our list. Oh, look, Jim, there's an antique shop in the basement. Yes. It seems to be either selling out or moving. Come on, Fern, let's go in and have a look around. Good day. Anything I can show you? Well, we'd like to look around, if you don't mind. Of course not. Here's some nice tables, Jim. If everything's in pretty much of a mess, I'm in the process of moving. Oh? Well, don't you find this a good section for antiques? Oh, the section's fine. Nearly all the old people living around here have wonderful old furniture. I'm just moving across the street. It's only this house I object to. What, the house? Yes. It's owned by Roy Wade. What with him being such a firebug, you never know which of his houses will go up next. After that last fire, I decided to get out of here. After all, I've got a lot of money tied up in these antiques. Well, you shouldn't have anything to worry about now that Wade's safely in jail. But he's not. What? They released him. A flash came over the radio about 15 minutes ago. Insufficient evidence, they said. Hello, Mr. Douglas. Hello, Winston. I just dropped in to tell you that I think I finally persuaded Uncle John to sell you a few of those old pieces of furniture you asked me about. Oh, good. Drop around to his house sometime this week and look them over. And see that you offer him a fair price. I'll do that, all right. Okay. Well, let me know how you make out with the old boy. There. I will. Thanks, Winston. Well, who was that young fellow? He looked familiar, but I can't place him. He's Winston Madden. Old John Madden's nephew. Oh, yes. His uncle lives in that house Roy Wade owns on 7th Street. That's right. Jim, I found hmm? just the table we need for the office. Okay, have it sent, Fern. It's that one next to the china closet. Oh. Send it to Jim Brandon, 928... Excuse me. Are you Jim Brandon, the detective? Uh, yes. Well, I'm mighty proud to meet you. My name's Hubert Douglas. Well, how do you do? Say, Mr. Brandon, maybe you could use your influence to have something done about the shocking condition of this house. I thought you said you were moving. Well, I am, but I'm sorry for old Mr. Forsythe on the second floor. He'll be left alone here. And what about the top floor apartment? Well, those people moved out three days ago. After tonight, old Forsythe will be here alone. And I think Roy Wade should be forced to make certain repairs for that old man's safety. Well, I'll look into the matter, Douglas. Come on, Fern, settle the matter of that end table. We've got to be getting along. <laughs> had the Board of Health summon Mr. Forsythe for an interview so we could examine this house, didn't you? Well, that's right, Fern. Now, we'll take this empty top apartment first and work our way down. Oh, I felt like a thief sneaking in that back window. Jim, why are you so interested in this particular house? Because the facts concerning it tally with those of the other Wade houses that have burned down. Jim, would you open that window, please? It's stifling in here. Okay, Fern. Fern, look who's coming toward the house. Why, it's Mr. Wade. What do you suppose he wants here? I don't know, but I intend to stick around and find out. Oh, Jim, if Wade finds us here, there'll be fireworks. Now, don't worry. There's no reason for him to come up to the empty apartment. Look, Jim, he's leaving. Yes. Come on, Fern, let's continue with our investigation. We haven't any time to lose. Jim, hmm? is it my imagination or do I smell smoke? Well, you're right, Fern. We'd better get out of here. Here, this way. This door leads to the stairway. Ooh! Fern, get back! The whole floor below us is in flames! Jim, what are we going to do? We're trapped!
back to the Avenger and death rings the bell. Jim, <coughs> we can't stay in this room another minute. The whole wall's burning. The engines have arrived, Fern. I'll have the ladder up in no time. He's awful. Fern, over here. That wall's kicking in. Here. Roll out on the ledge. I'll hold you from the inside. No, I won't go unless you come too. Well, all right. Take hold of my hand and go ahead. Now, hold tight. Jim, this ledge is only a few inches wide. I know. Now, don't look down. Steady now. It'll only be for a minute. They're putting the ladder up. We're perfectly safe. Now, I'm holding on to the window sash. Keep your nerve first. I will, Jim. There. The ladder's right at your feet. Now, I'll steady you while you step onto it. Okay? It's all right. Come on, Jim. I sent for you to come over here to the laboratory to watch a little experiment. Well, that's not why I came, Jim. I want an explanation of that statement you made on the phone. Oh, you mean my warning that you'd be making a fool of yourself if you were arrested way to get it? Yes. Now, you yourself admitted that you saw Wade at Forsyth's house just before the fire broke out. I said in front of the house, not inside it. Oh, Wade must be guilty, Jim. Now, why don't you try to help me prove that instead of fighting me every step of the way? Because I know now how those fires were started. And there's an even chance that someone is trying to frame Wade out to the kitchen and I'll show you. The kitchen? Huh? Yes, Fern and I have everything ready for the demonstration. All right, better be good. One more fire and I'll be back in the harness, pounding a beat. Hello, Inspector. Well, hello, Fern. What are you up to in here? You'll see. Over here, Inspector. Uh, Take a look at this doorbell. This is where it rings when anyone presses the bell out front. Oh, Jim, what does your doorbell have to do with an arson and murder case? Do you notice anything peculiar about this bell? No. Uh, good. Because right inside that bell, I've rigged up a tiny container of sulfuric acid. Directly underneath is this wastebasket containing paper and rags soaked in oil. And when the bell rings, the hammer breaks the acid container. The waste ignites, and presto, our fire has a good start. Yeah. Now, if I really wanted to make sure this whole house would burn down rapidly, I would spray that wall with gasoline, gunpowder, or flashlight powder. In a matter of seconds, the whole place would be in flames. Are the fire extinguishers ready, Vernon? Yes, sir. Now, here, you take one of them, Inspector, and I'll take the other. Be ready to put out the blaze in that basket. Okay, Fern, you can go out and ring the bell now. Thank you. Well, a case like this, Jim, a perfectly innocent person might press the doorbell and set the fire going. Precisely the point of this demonstration, Inspector. That's why I didn't want you to arrest Wade again until we're certain he did the rigging as well as the ringing. There, how do you like that? Well, I'll... Hurry, Inspector. Get that extinguisher working. I haven't much insurance. Jim, why are we going to Douglas's antique shop again? I want to find out if Douglas saw anyone going in or out of Forsyth's house yesterday, Fern. That demonstration you made this morning certainly leaves the field wide open. As far as suspects are concerned, doesn't it? Oh, you mean you're no longer convinced it was Wade, huh? No, but I'm not convinced it wasn't either. We can't eliminate Wade, but on the other hand, the criminal could be someone we've had no reason to suspect so far. Oh, Jim, there's old Mr. Forsythe. Looks like he's headed for Douglas's store, too. Oh, yes. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Forsythe. Good day. We see now you're Mr. Brandon, aren't you? Oh, that's right. Have you found another place to live, Mr. Forsythe? Not yet, miss. Uh, spent the night at the settlement house... Everything I had went up in that fire. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, yes, everything. Even my wife's antique jewelry. I held on to it all these years through thick and thin. And was it valuable jewelry, Mr. Forsythe? Oh, yes, yes, indeed it was. Then Mr. Douglas offered me $2,000 for it more than once, but I could never bring myself to sell it. Oh, here's Mr. Douglas's shop. Are you coming in? Oh, yes, yes. He's the only friend I have. The only one who's ever bothered to be very kind to me. Oh, uh, Mr. Douglas, it's Forsyth. Uh, Be right with you. Oh, he has some wonderful old furniture here, hasn't he? Often bought old pieces Hello from there. me. Hello oh. there. Oh, Mr. Brandon. Good afternoon, Douglas. Oh, Douglas, I uh, came in to see if you could let me have some of that old furniture back I sold you. I thought maybe I could rent a little 
room someplace, you see. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Forsythe. All that furniture has been sold. Oh, that's, that's too bad. I was hoping... Now, look, Mr. Forsythe, I have a little room on the second floor that I don't use. Why don't you stay there for the time being? Well, that's very kind of you, Douglas. Don't I... mention it. Go up now and take a look at it. Right at the head of the stairs. All right. I, I won't impose on your kindness long. I'll try to find something. Oh, uh, Mr. Brandon? Douglas, did you see anyone entering or leaving Forsyth's house yesterday before the fire? Well, I wasn't going to say anything about it, but I did see Mr. Wade going towards the house just before the fire broke out. No one else? Mm -hmm. No. Well, I guess your hunch was right. You moved just in time. There's no cure for a firebug, Mr. Brandon. I wouldn't live in one of Wade's houses if he paid me rent for the privilege. Well, thanks, Douglas. Come on, Fern. Well, clues seem to be a disappearing commodity these days. Of course, I've paid us a clue, Fern. You do? I'll tell you later. Right now, we're going to call on John Madden. What for? Madden lives in the last remaining house that Wade owns. I know, but you checked in on him the other day. Jim, surely you don't think that Wade... I'm not stopping to think, Fern. This time, I'm not going to give death a chance to ring the bell. Well, there's old John Madden's house, Jim. He doesn't live in that big place all alone, does he? Yes. His nephew, Winston, has an apartment on the other side of town. I'm going to use the knocker on this door just to play safe. Jim, you don't think Wade intends to burn down this lovely old house, do you? No, Fern, I never said any such thing. What do you want, please? You're Winston, John Madden's nephew, aren't you? That's right. Oh, I saw you in Douglas' shop the other day. I suppose Douglas sent you to pick up the furniture he bought. That's it, there in the hall. Oh, Mr. Douglas did buy that furniture from your uncle, then. Of course. Say, aren't you from Douglas? No. Where is your uncle? Uncle John was taken ill last night. He's in the hospital. May we come in, please? I'm Jim Brandon, connected with the police department. Well, what do you want? I'm busy packing. I, I'm taking Uncle John to live with me. We're coming in. Step aside. Uh, just... Step aside. Come on, friend. I... Now, Winston, what's wrong with your uncle? I... I don't know. There's something he ate, the doctor said. Anyway, it's none of your business. Are you moving your uncle's things out of here with or without his consent? Now, this is a private matter. I, I don't like your attitude, Brandon. Get out of here and don't come back without a warrant. Okay, that's the way you want it. Well, Mr. Brandon, I think that is what is known as the bum's rush. Uh-huh. Fern, go back to the office and call the inspector. Tell him to stand by for a call from me. Okay. Jim, it's that nephew, isn't it? He's the guilty one. You'll know everything within a few hours, friend. Now, run along. What are you going to do, Jim? I've got a date with a firebug as the Avenger. Madden kept all his money in this bureau. Gotta be here somewhere. What's that? Who's in here? It's the Avenger, Douglas. I've been waiting for you. The Avenger? What do you want here? I've taken the precaution of removing the money and valuables you hope to find in this apartment. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Avenger. I bought this furniture from Madden. It belongs to me. You took the furniture you bought out of here an hour ago when Winston went to visit his uncle. Then you came back to rob and burn this house. I'll make you wish you didn't know so much, Avenger. You might as well give up, Douglas. The house is surrounded. Oh, no. I have another plan. When the police ring the bell, they'll set this house afire. We'll be trapped here, Avenger. You'll die with me. You'd prefer death by fire to a trial by jury, Douglas. But the bell will not set off the fire this time. The Avenger removed the acid from the bell. Your schemes are over, Douglas. You'll stand trial for arson and for murder.
Douglas confessed, Jim? Yes, Fern. And you were partly right in your deductions about the death of Tanner. Except that I accused Wade instead of Douglas of his murder. Yes. Douglas's motive throughout was robbery. He used his antique business as a means of getting into the homes of old people he thought had money. Under the pretext of examining various pieces of furniture, he found out where the valuables were hidden. Then, later when he went back to load the furniture, he stole the valuables, rigged up his fire device, and left. The first person to ring the bell set off the fire, and all the evidence went up in flames. Right. Then those first two persons who died really were caught in the fire. Yes, but Adam Tanner got wise to what Douglas was up to, and Douglas killed him. But what led you to suspect Douglas, Jim? Douglas had bought furniture from every house where a fire occurred. That in itself was suspicious, but not conclusive. Old Mr. Forsythe gave me the real clue. He told us Douglas knew about that antique jewelry he had. I knew that jewelry hadn't been burned because we had put the ruins of that fire through the sieve. Therefore, the jewelry had been stolen. And since Douglas knew of its existence and value, he was the logical one to suspect. But why did Douglas concentrate on Roy Wade's houses? For several reasons. He knew it would be easy to throw suspicion on Wade because Wade's houses were insured for all the traffic would bear. They were perfect fire traps also. Besides, Douglas knew enough about Wade's business to know when he made his rent collections. You mean he deliberately staged some of those fires so that Wade would be the one to ring the bell? Exactly, Bren. But, Jim, what made you so sure you could trap Douglas at Madden's house? Well, I wasn't sure, Fern. As a matter of fact, I wasn't sure until I discovered that Douglas had bought that furniture from Madden. Then I knew the stage was set. Now, who do you suppose that is? Mm, probably the inspector bringing us the afternoon papers. His picture's on the front page of every one of them. names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought.